And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And Samuel said to the house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtoreth from among you, and direct your heart to the Lord, and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the people of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtoreth, and they served the Lord only. Hi, I'm Gary, and you're watching 7 Minutes in the Word. The Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 3-7, through 7, tell of Samuel becoming God's prophet and how he led Israel to repentance and to a return to God. The phrase, from Dan to Beersheba, meant all the land of Israel, from Dan in the far north to Beersheba in the far south, had gathered to Samuel and had repented, promising to serve only the Lord God of Israel. Though not using the phrase from Dan to Beersheba in the third chapter of Mark, the writer paints a similar literary picture. Reading now from Mark, the third chapter, verses 7 through 8. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed, from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan, and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. It is good for us to see the comparison between Samuel and Jesus. Samuel was a great prophet who came to call the house of Israel to repentance and to return to God. He drew Jews from all parts of the land, from Dan to Beersheba. Jesus, the Son of God, came as a greater prophet to call the household of God to repentance and to return to God. Jesus came to call all men, uh, Jews, Gentiles, to return to God. From Jewish Galilee and Judea, uh, from Gentile Transjordan, and from Gentile Tyre and Sidon, people heard of Jesus and came to him. Jews and Gentiles both crowded together to get to Jesus. Continuing in Mark, the third chapter, verses 9 through 12. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God! And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. Jews and Gentiles were pressing and crowding against each other, trying to touch Jesus. Even those with unclean spirits were coming to him and falling down before him and identifying him as the Son of God. The contrast between the crowds and the Pharisees is stark. Jesus was hated by the Pharisees and popular with the people. The people wanted to touch Jesus. The Pharisees just wanted to kill him. The teachers of the law refused to see the divinity of Jesus while the evil spirits were calling him the Son of God. And it was from the great crowd of people that Jesus chose his twelve apostles. Mark three thirteen through 19 And he went up on the mountain and called to them those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. Jesus did not go to the Pharisees' schools to find his disciples. Uh, he didn't choose his disciples from among the philosophers and scholars of his day. He chose 12 men who had come to him. He chose four fishermen. Uh, at least three of these fishermen had quick tempers. Uh, the two of them he even called sons of thunder. He chose a tax collector, 
a man who had previously been hated by the fishermen. He chose a zealot from a group of political activists who sought to overthrow the occupying Roman government. Uh, he was likely from the same group that Barabbas was associated with. And of the twelve men that he chose, he also selected a man whom he knew would betray him. After teaching and healing the people, Jesus went home. But even there, he could not escape the crowds. Mark tells us in chapter 3, verses 20 through 21, Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. The large crowd, consisting of Jews and Gentiles from all over the region, were once again crowded around and in the house where Jesus was staying. Jesus and his disciples were so surrounded by the crowd that they could not even eat. Then, in verse 21, Mark introduces one of his famous uh, bookend sections. He says that over concern for Jesus' health and safety, his family, his mother and brothers, were going to take control of Jesus. They feared that he had lost his mind. We will visit this section next week. It is a section that deals with both the acceptance and rejection of Jesus. To Jesus, it was all about being family. But the people whom Jesus considered his family might surprise you. Thank you for watching this week. Please give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button down in the lower right-hand corner. And do come back again next week for another 7 Minutes in the Word.